It's Jordan Moore and Chris Fisher, the voice of the USC men's basketball Trojans tonight at the lab and presented by Audi as Trojans Live. For over a century, Audi has overcome every obstacle to create progressive technologies that change the world. Experience innovation at a Southern California Audi dealer today. Audi, this is truth in engineering. I know that John Jackson will uh, be upset that he's missing our next guest, his old baseball teammate, Dan Hubbs, who is now, of course, the head coach of USC baseball and uh, coming off quite a season, coach. First NCAA tournament in... A decade for the Trojans, and what's the key to, to building off that momentum as your season begins on Friday? Well, I think the biggest thing that we have to do is just realize that we have to try and go and be the best team out there every day. Uh, they don't give you a free pass to the regionals just because you got there the year before. And right. um, The kids know now what it takes to get there. They know the hard work you have to put in, and, and they know that you can't take any game for granted. And I think that this team's embraced that. They know what it takes, and... and um, you know, we fell a little bit short last year. We got to that regional final against Virginia, and we felt we just ran out of steam that Sunday. It was a long day, and uh, we know that if we have a chance to host, it might be different. You know, and we probably missed hosting by a game. Yeah. Like the year before, we probably missed the regionals <laughs> by a game. So maybe this will be a good segue into us getting to the World Series this year. Coach, from a personnel standpoint, obviously from year to year, things change, and you, you lose your catcher. Garrett Stubbs goes Houston Astros drafted. Uh, what's different from last year to this year, and how do you ultimately replace your catcher who really was one of the best players not only in the conference but the country? Well, obviously losing a guy with the leadership, not even to mention the production that he had offensively, defensively, on the bases, but the leadership that Garrett provided is the biggest thing that we're going to miss with Garrett. Um, you know, Bobby Stahl moves on, and he was an All-American last year in left field, and Dante Flores was a four-year starter, and Blake Lacey a three-year starter. So that's four guys in the lineup. Kyle Toomey and uh, Tyler Gilbert were huge people for us in the bullpen and, and on the, in the rotation that we have to replace. But, you know, all programs go through that, and we return five starters in the lineup. Uh, we return two-thirds of our rotation. Uh, we feel like we're really deep, probably the deepest – staff I've had as a pitching coach in 16 years at D1 and um, we're real excited about what we have I think the biggest thing is you, you try and recruit talented kids that buy into a culture buy into each other hold each other accountable and then you know it's their team they have to end up producing when we put them out there we try and put them in a position to succeed but at the end of the day they're the ones hitting throwing and playing catch so you know, we're going to talk to Clancy Pendergast here in a minute. And you know, for football, it's all about signing day. We had a signing day show a little while ago. Baseball is different because you have signing day. And it's all oh, great. Look at all these guys we got. But then you get through the MLB draft, and then you find out who signs with major league teams and who's actually coming here. How did that all shake out for you guys, not only you know, in terms of some juniors that had decisions to make, but also obviously incoming freshmen? Well, obviously we lost Bobby Stahl signed as a junior, Tyler Gilbert signed as a junior, and Kyle Toomey signed as a junior. On the positive side, Brent Wheatley came back for his senior year, Mark Huberman came back for his senior year, Timmy Robinson came back for his senior year, Kyle Davis came back for his senior year. Uh, Reggie Southall could have been drafted last year, he's a redshirt junior. Uh, David Oppenheim came back for a senior year. These are Brooks Krisky came back for a senior year. So we're, we're talking about some big guys who produced in a big way for us last year that are back as seniors, which is invaluable. You don't see that very right. often. I think that's the true test of where our program's at right now, that they were willing to forego that. Of the incoming guys, we lost a couple of guys to the draft, but we have a freshman, Merrick Krause, who turned down the 11th round and came to school. Dylan Paulson was getting a lot of... Um, Love from the scouts during the spring, hitting over 450 at, in high school, and he came to school and probably going to be our starting first baseman. Uh, Lars Newbar is another guy who, you know, football was looking at as a possible dual-threat quarterback, but was a first-team All-State shortstop. He spurned offers to go in the draft, and, and so we feel confident that we have some really good athletes that came in as freshmen. Uh, we kept some juniors to be seniors, and um, we have a good mix of young and old on this team. Coach, when over the years when, when this team, I should say over the last decade, when this program was really struggling and, and having a hard time making the postseason, a lot of people kept asking, "What can this, what can this program do to get back to, to the level that it that it was at?" And, and and is it even possible with all the scholarship restrictions that are in place that make it more difficult for a private school like USC to compete? When you took over as head coach, ultimately, what was your strategy? 
and and how did you get it incrementally to the point that it is now to where it's back in the top 25 and competing well i think at the end of the day you're trying to find good baseball players who value going to school and understand that um, there's two ways to get into the major leagues you know and, and college baseball is a great avenue to get into the big leagues last year it was 52 percent of the opening day rosters were out of college um, and so if you say that scouts do a great job of signing the best talent why is it the 52 percent you know of opening day rosters came out of college well there has to be a reason part of it is the maturity part of it is the culture part of it is just growing and getting better handling a lifestyle and so what we're trying to do is sell that and we feel like we have a great coaching staff with myself, Matt Curtis, Gabe Alvarez, Chris Duffy, guys who have had real good success in college and had great success in pro ball. You know, Coach Duffy, Coach Alvarez both played in the big leagues. Coach Alvarez or Coach Curtis got to double A, I got to triple A. I mean, we have success both in college and in pro ball. We can mold them over three, four years. We talk about that. We talk about the Trojan family. USC is a brand that's not hard to sell. I mean, you walk around campus. No one walks in my office about after going on a tour of campus and goes, yeah, I didn't really like that. <laughs> it was okay. No one does that. So the biggest challenge we have is cost of attendance. We all know that. We embrace it. We feel like we have a product that's worth the price. And so what we try and we get kids who might be willing to spend, their parents will be willing to invest a little bit more on them coming to school than they might at a different school. Um, that's it's a challenge like i said it's not an obstacle it's just a challenge helps that it was mid 80s all week in the middle of february too that doesn't, doesn't, doesn't hurt. hurt good time to do those tours you're listening to uh, dan hubs the head coach of usc baseball ranked number 12 in the country as the season uh, gets started this weekend and you know coach they had this de debate uh in baseball at several different levels you have a player in kyle davis who can be your ace he could also be your stopper at the end and both are so valuable to a team you know, how do you decide it and look at his role as, as you get going to the season? Well, I think one of the things with Kyle is he would have been our Friday starter last year, and then right. he had an ankle injury in December, and, and we put him back in the pen. And, and obviously we know he pitched extremely well down the stretch, had a no-hitter in the seventh inning of the first game of the regional. Um, he's the guy you want to have the ball win in their biggest games. And going into this year, if we can win that Friday game against some really good pitchers on yeah. Friday in our conference and – in non-conference quite frankly then that sets us up for the weekend we feel real confident in it. i think the next step in his development is to prove to the scouts that he can be a starter there's no question in my mind he can when you see what he's done over the last couple of years in that role it is a you know it was kind of a crutch of mine knowing that i had him in the back <laughs> end of the pen and that he could go multiple innings that it wasn't just a one yeah. inning guy in the ninth inning that i could put him in in the sixth seventh eighth inning and there's something different when he comes into the game. The team kind of feeds off of him. There's an energy that he brings that they just feel like, okay, the game's over. Um, we feel this year that we're pretty deep in the back end with a lot of guys who can get three, four, six outs, um, probably six or seven deep, and we haven't been that way with some serious power arms. I mean, we're talking about probably having five guys that can go 90, 93 at a minimum, some guys going up to 95, 96. And so... Being able to have that luxury allows you to have some veterans up front who can probably go seven innings and, and put you in a real good position to win. And so that made it a lot easier to make that decision. All right, it's time for USC baseball season. The Trojans open up against North Dakota at Dado Field this weekend. Friday at 6, Saturday at 2, Sunday at 1, uh, all season long. Check out usctrojans.com see the full schedule. Get trojantix.com for tickets. You can always walk up to the Dado Field uh, Great atmosphere and a you know real program on the rise under Dan Hubbs. We come back. It's the defensive coordinator for USC back in the Trojan family. Clancy Pendergast will join us next on Trojans Live. 